The design for the vertical lift bridge, originally approved five years earlier, called for a steel Warren truss bridge. A truss bridge consists of connected structural elements that form open triangles, which are distinctive visual elements of a truss system. Truss bridges combine strength with an open framing system that uses fewer materials than other types of bridge structures, making them economical to build. Truss materials evolved from wood to iron and later steel, which was durable, light, and strong. The uses of trusses helped build bridges across the West because of their lighter weight, lower cost, and standardized designs. At the time, the Warren truss design was a popular choice for both steel highway and railroad bridges. Having a distinctive rigid look, this bridge type connected the triangles together into recognizable W shapes, which formed long horizontal spans. Trusses were practical, but were normally utilitarian in design. The Warren truss differs from other truss types because all of its members, the metal parts that hold them together, act both in compression, pushing forces, and tension, pulling forces. There are generally no vertical members in a Warren truss, only diagonal bracing, struts, and stringers with horizontal stringers, portals, and cords. Plans called for the new Terminal Island vertical lift bridge to be supported by reinforced concrete piers under the two towers and abutments at the ends of the Warren Truss. The length of the bridge, including approaches, totaled 4,000 feet, nearly three quarters of a mile. Construction on the bridge started in 1946. Since the contract budget was tight, the Navy supplied the contractor with surplus supplies, mostly steel, in order to reduce costs. The first challenge to the contractor was the length of the steel piles received from the Navy. They were too short. Another issue was discovered when the towers, each at 240 feet high, were directly in the flight path of Navy aircraft approaching Terminal Island. Flashing red beacons were installed at the top of each tower to notify pilots of their heights and the tower locations. During construction, the greatest challenge proved to be dealing with a ground settlement and subsidence caused by nearby oil drilling in the port of Long Beach. The marshy ground expanded and contracted, which horizontally displaced the bridge. As construction progressed throughout 1947, despite these challenges, it was apparent that this vertical lift bridge would be a magnificent product of engineering and construction. Local leaders understood that it would not have been built if Commodore Heim had not convinced the Navy to provide the critical funding for the bridge. While the bridge was still under construction, the city of Long Beach adopted a resolution requesting that it be named in honor of Commodore Heim, the man who possessed the vision and leadership necessary to see it built. The Secretary of the Navy agreed and the new lift bridge was officially designated the Commodore Schuyler F. Heim Bridge.